What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night Out channel and welcome to the series where we're just running through or walking through the franchise mode. Back on episode 4, 9 more games to play. We're 11, 5, and 2. Just going to go ahead and jump right into the first game and see if we can continue the good luck that we had in the last episode. We're playing against the Lehigh Valley Firebirds for our, I believe the fourth time, third or fourth time. I think we played them a few times already. Can't remember how many times exactly. But let's see if we can get one more win against them. All right, first period starts off within the first few minutes. Nothing's really happening. Then about four minutes into it, Lehigh Valley starting off pretty recklessly as they knock one of our guys down with a huge hit. And they letting us know that they come to play. Ten minutes later, nothing's really going on. The first period's kind of slow, very slow, defensive style game. Nobody can really corral the puck. Uh, a lot of battles in the neutral zone. Nothing's really going on. And then with about four minutes to go, Laura Kynan, the Firebirds goaltender, with a good save to keep the game tied. At 0 0. Moving into the second period, 30 seconds into the second period, Laura Kine with another good glove save, keeping the game tied up. And he's looking pretty good in net so far. A couple minutes later, Lehigh Valley's had enough of the tie game and they end up putting one behind Bernier. Then a couple minutes later, another Laura Kine in one time save, keeping the game tied, making sure that he's just not letting anything get by him. And the score still remains 1-0 in favor of the Firebirds. A few minutes later, a big hit from us, trying to get some momentum going, trying to get, you know, something going so we can get a dub against the Firebirds. And about four minutes later, Laura Kynan with two tremendous saves. This goaltender has been playing, he's playing better than Sandberg's. I believe it's Sandberg that's the other goaltender. And this Laura Kynan guy is doing really, really well. A couple minutes later, Bernier with this save. The Firebirds got a behind-the-net play going on. And... Uh, Bernier with a good save to keep the deficit only to one. And then about three minutes later, Paul takes a shot. And then after the shot, it looks like he gets knocked down and he just gets roughed up a little bit. No interference call, nothing. It just looked a little off. It looked like it was way after the play was, you know, done. And uh, <laughs> I guess the Firebirds are here to let us know that they want this dub. Moving on to the third period again. Slow game, nothing's really going on. Within the first minute of the third period, Lauren kind of with another one time behind the net save keeping the game where it's at and making sure we cannot get any closer to that lead and then four minutes later lehigh valley stretches their lead to two with another goal a few seconds later arturo with a huge hit for us trying to get something going trying to do something in order to pick up the pace and get a w it's a lot of time left we still have time to get a goal let's see if we can tie it up a few minutes later lord kynan with another one-time save, but I looked at it or briefly saw he wasn't. Was he looking the right direction? It looked like he was looking towards the right side of the of the rink, and the puck just kind of hit him, and he ended up getting a save. I guess maybe I didn't see it correctly, but Laura Kynan with another crazy save, keeping the shutout going. And then a couple minutes later, Paul gets hit once again, knocked down. I mean, the Firebirds are really bullying us this game. A couple minutes later, Lehigh Valley with another big hit with about nine minutes to go. And then for the rest of the period, nothing really happens. Really slow game in terms of uh, offense. And it's just a gritty, grindy game that the Firebirds ended up coming out on top again. We could not get a goal past Laura Kynan. We couldn't get any really, you know, opportunities past him. And they end up taking a 2-0 win, a shutout victory over us in, I believe, the fourth meeting between us and the Firebirds. But let's go ahead and move on to game two and hopefully we get some better luck. All right, moving on to game two against the Albany Spiders. This is the second time we're going against them, and I believe we came out on top in the first game. Let's see if we can pick up another dub. First five minutes or so, nothing's really going on. Another slow game. Again, we're looking just slow coming out the gate, a little sloppy, clumsy. I don't know what's going on with the team right now, but we're not looking too good. Uh, about seven minutes into the game, Albany takes advantage of our sloppiness and ends up putting a goal behind Bernier, making it one nothing in favor of them by a minute and a half later dad with a big hit on our side again trying to get some momentum going with the hits but it's just not converting to goals and then about 30 seconds later absolutely abysmal effort and defense on our part as bernier makes three saves pretty much back to back with no help and finally a big hit puts that guy out of the way but three saves under pressure relentless outworking pressure and we're just letting it happen absolutely abysmal effort moving on to the last five minutes within the game albany just again taking advantage of how we're playing and just scores another goal two nothing in favor of them very disappointing first period nothing else really happens after that it's just i don't know what's happening with this team right now 
We should be beating these guys. It should not be so difficult, but apparently we just like beating ourselves up. Moving on to the second period, we got about seven minutes in before something actually happens. They just kind of just go around the defenseman and just get a shot in that Bernier ends up saving. And then about a minute later, a wide open shot just in the middle, nobody covering him. Bernier with another save, trying to keep us alive. And it's just, I, I'm watching through this game, it's just I'm trying to figure out what I need to do to shake it up or just increase our efforts. Because right now, something is just off. Anyway, a few minutes later, five minutes left to go in the period. Bernier with another save. We're just getting outplayed still. It's like our guys are sleepy. They don't want to wake up. Bernier keeps us alive and only keeps the deficit to two. And then about three minutes later, a turnover leads to another shot with another save. By Bernier, I don't know story of the game right now that we just keep turning it over, can't corral it, can't get them out the defensive zone. They're just absolutely buzzing, and we just can't seem to do anything about it, even though we are the better team on paper. Let's go ahead and move on to the third period. I don't have much hope going into the third period. My, you know, usually I'd be like, it's fine, it's good. I don't have any hope. I don't know what's going on with this team, but I cannot. No hope. Two and a half minutes into the third period, I was right as Albany puts another goal into the back of the net making it three nothing and my hopes of coming back and winning this game is pretty much squashed i don't have any hope for this team right now two minutes later just an, another example of how much pressure i can't even the team can't even get it out of the zone i mean absolutely pathetic abysmal effort by the team just getting outworked by a team that's really not that good they're not they don't even have anybody good on their team except maybe Matthew Perot. And even then, he's like a 75 if that. Like, it's ridiculous what is happening right now. A couple minutes later, Jay Beagle has enough, and he puts a goal for our team. Finally, a little hope. Not that much, but just enough to maybe get the team going, giving us the first goal of the game, making it 3-1, to one, and getting his fifth on the season. Next 10 minutes or so, again, just it's just a repeating process of being at work and they're kind of just bullying us. They're kind of just treating us like we're nothing. And five minutes left into the game, Albany scores another goal, just outworking us, just outplaying us. And I'm just so disappointed. Very abysmal effort from our team. And it's just, I'm going to shake some things up for the next game, change some lines around, uh, maybe look to get a couple of different players. We'll see. But it's just, this is ridiculous. We lost both to the Firebirds and the Spiders back to back. The effort wasn't there. The time on attack was ridiculously in their favor. They had over eight minutes on their time on attack. We had barely three minutes. I just okay. Well, these were supposed to the these were supposed to be the two easy games within this episode, and it ended up being more disappointing than I thought. Let's go ahead and move on to the next game. Let's see what we can do. Alright guys, back for game three against the Thunder Bay Warriors. Definitely a tough team. They got all the free agent NHL players on their team. They're the only created team that I did that for, so they're going to be a tough team. But I'm feeling pretty good going into the game. I'm feeling like, you know, when we play against better teams, we play a little bit better. And uh, let's see if we can get a dub against the Warriors. One minute into the first period, the Thunder Bay Warriors just take my hype and squash it down as they get the first goal of the game, making it one nothing in favor of them. Don't like to see that right out the gate, but what are you going to do? A few minutes later, huge hit by one of our guys in the defensive zone. And then a few minutes later after that, Paul finds a way to put it in the back of the net. What a play. What a pass. What a look in the five hole. One to one. And we are looking pretty good. A few seconds later, off the face off, Thunder Bay with a huge hit on one of our guys, knocking him down pretty good. And then a few minutes later, Maldova's in net, and he makes a tremendous save, keeping the game tied at one. About five minutes later, Novak with a huge hit for us, keeping that momentum and that mentality going. And then about 30 seconds later, JB with his seventh on the season, making it 2-1. We have the lead. We're playing really well, way better than we did in the previous two games. And we're feeling pretty good going into the second. Second period starts off, nothing's really going on. A couple minutes in, Thunder Bay with a huge hit in order to really ramp up the intensity of the game. And then about a minute later, Thunder Bay puts the cherry on top and gets another goal, making it 2-2. Definitely an exciting game to watch. Very down-to-the-wire type of game, extremely tight. Then moving on about eight minutes later, nothing's really going on. A couple of good hits, a couple of good saves. And then we have Cody Eakin finding a goal. Did not expect it to go in, but he blasted past Hammond, and he gets his fourth on the season, putting us in the advantage once again. 
Then down to the last couple minutes within the second period, Thunder Bay with another huge hit on us. And they're, you know, they're not backing down. They're making sure that they want to come out on top in this game. Moving into the third period, starting off with a couple of good saves from Hammond. Two minutes in, keeping the game where it's at. And then 30 seconds later, the transition, the Thunder Bay Warriors use that momentum in order to get the tie once again, get a goal, and making it 3-3. Eight minutes go by, nothing's really happening until Moldova makes an amazing one-time save. What an incredible save. The guy was out there by himself, but Moldova shut it down, keeping the game tied. Then a couple minutes later, Novak with another huge hit. And then a few minutes after that, Novak with another couple of huge hits. Novak really leaving his mark on this game, making sure he's trying to carry the team. If not with his offensive capabilities, at least he's going to lead with the body. Then about 30 seconds later, Thomas Tatar coming in off the rebound, his own rebound, getting his 14th of the season, riding off that momentum that Novak was building, making it 4-3 in favor of us. We just keep getting the lead and they just keep coming back and tying it. So hopefully we can hold on to it now. Less than three minutes to go. I'm feeling really good. We're playing really hard and we definitely deserve this win. Down to the last minute, Maldova with a huge save, keeping the game where it's at. And then a few seconds later, Maldova just fighting hard, really scrapping right in front of the net, making sure that he's trying to keep it out as much as he can. But unfortunately, 20 seconds later, the Thunder Bay Warriors find the back of the net and they ended up tying it with 14 goddamn seconds left to go in the third period. Moving on to OT, nothing's really happening within the first minute or so, but then before we could really get a breath in. The Thunder Bay's Warriors get a good opportunity. They don't miss on it. We put the body on. The guy still gets the shot off, and they end up scoring, and they take a 5-4 win over us in OT. I mean, at least we got a point, but we should have won this game. The Taiwan attack was definitely in our favor. We just could not finish. Uh, definitely a lot better effort than the previous two games, but it's just unfortunate that we could not get the win in this one. So our losing streak continues. Let's go ahead and move on to game four. All right, back for game four against the Philadelphia Flyers. Let's see if we can pick up a win and break our losing streak. It's going to be a tough team to beat because they are an NHL team. Well, let's see what we can do. First six minutes, nothing's really going on until we get a takeaway. And Carter Hart with a good save in order to keep the game tied. Then about five minutes later, Bernier with a two-on-one save. It was a breakaway that turned into a two-on-one because they passed it back for some reason. And uh, Bernier got a good save off of that one. About two and a half minutes later, Philadelphia finally gets a goal. Some weak-looking shot that somehow goes in. Bernier is unable to get it. And we go down one nothing. Fortunately, 30 seconds later, Kevin Fitzgerald with a goal. Nice. Second goal of the season. Ties it up. And we're looking pretty good. Fighting pretty hard. Let's see if we can come out on top. A few minutes later, down to the last three minutes. A save and a hit. Bernier with the save. Hit by one of our guys. And we're playing pretty hard. And then about a minute and a half to go. Thomas Tatar with the hit of his own, which you don't really see very often. But he does. We go into the second period all tied up. Second period starts off pretty slow. Nothing's really going on within the first like five minutes. Nothing really happening. Then about seven minutes into it, Carter Hart with another good save, keeping the game tied up. And then about six minutes later, right after that, Philadelphia with another goal. No way it goes through. The pass somehow leaks through all of my defenders and it goes right to the guy, getting a 2-1 lead advantage over us. We are now down by one. Fortunately, it doesn't last long as four minutes later, Cody Eakin with a rebound goal, getting his fifth on the season, tying it up 2-2, two two, and we're all tied up going into the third period. A few seconds into the third period, a four-on-four four save by Bernier. And then a few seconds later after that, Philadelphia with a big hit. One minute later, Bernier makes a weird decision to not cover the puck, pulls it out. Nobody's able to corral it, goes straight to one of their guys, and Philadelphia's you know, they capitalize on it, score, get the goal, and now they're up 3-2. to two. I'm not feeling too well now because we got one pair left to play. It's an NHL team. They're up by one. It's uh, it's not looking too good. A few seconds later, Arturo with a good hit, trying to get some momentum going. Then a few minutes after that, Bernier with another good glove save, keeping the game where it's at. Bernier definitely, he bails us out a lot. He bails us out a lot. One minute later, Carter Hart with a save of his own. Cross Creek gets the save and keeps the Flyers ahead. A couple minutes later, Brendan Gooley finally finds a way to get to the back of the net. Second goal of the season, putting us tied up again, 3-3, three three, and it's looking pretty good. Unfortunately, right off of the faceoff, right after Gooley's goal, one of our guys gets hit, it gets knocked down, there's a breakaway, and Philadelphia does not miss, making it 3-4. to four. 
in favor of the Philadelphia Flyers. And <laughs> as soon as I felt better, they just went and squashed it immediately. Absolutely abysmal. Moving on, three minutes later, Novak with a huge hit. And then a couple minutes after that, what a play. Absolutely beautiful pass from Tatar. Zaroni gets his fifth on the season. We tied it up once again. We're going back and forth with the lead. Hopefully, we can find a way to come out on top. Very exciting game to watch. Let's see if we can get ahead. Two minutes later, unfortunately, Philadelphia has had enough of this back and forth tie game as they put another goal in, a power play goal. The penalties this game was killing us, and the Flyers end up taking the advantage once again. However, less than a minute to go. <laughs> Tick tocking back and forth with the lead as Aroni finds his second of the night, sixth on the season, and tying it up once again, five to five. Dear God. <laughs> What an exciting game. Then a few seconds ago, a game-tying save by Bernier. Like, if he didn't get this, it would have been over. And he ends up saving our asses and pushing it to OT. OT starts off, nothing's really happening. The first few minutes, it's really slow. Nothing's really going on. Then about two minutes left to go, Bernier with a great save. And then, fortunately, finally, Eakin gets a chance, and he scores with a minute to go in OT, and we take a win over the Philadelphia Flyers, breaking our losing streak, and again, proving that we can actually beat the higher teams in the league. We just have to play harder. We take a 6-5 to five win over the Philadelphia Flyers in OT, and I'm feeling pretty good going against the next team. I think Dallas is up next. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, back for game five, coming off the big win off the Philadelphia Flyers. We're going against the Dallas Stars. Let's see if we can carry that momentum into this game. In the first 30 seconds of the game, Dallas starts off the game with a huge hit, letting us know it's not going to be an easy win. And then about eight minutes later, Bernier on the penalty kill makes two incredible saves in order to keep the game tied. And then also within that penalty kill, my dad with a huge hit, got getting up really slow, and we do really well to kill off the first power play for the Dallas Stars of the game. A couple minutes later, Bernier with another good save, really keeping us within the game in the first period. They're putting a lot of pressure on us. And then unfortunately, we take another penalty which Dallas ends up cashing in on. They get a power play goal. It was a good play, which is unfortunate the way it went. And they put it behind the net, making it 1-0. A couple minutes later, Ottinger with a good save. Two good ones in order to keep the Dallas Stars ahead. And then a few minutes later, uh, Justin Bailey gets some spotlight on him because he ended up getting hurt. Uh, he ends up walking into the locker room and does not come out for the remainder of the game. I don't know what happened. Maybe he got hit with a puck or something, but I don't... I didn't see him get hit or anything. So and then a few seconds later, Bernie with another one-timer save. And then at the end of the period, we get a big hit and save by Bernie. And we go into the second period only down by one. We're doing pretty good so far. I feel pretty good. Uh, I think we're playing pretty well. Dallas is just really out hustling us and out working us just a little bit. But I think we're up to their standard. I think we're playing pretty well. And I got a pretty good feeling. Moving into the second period, about a minute in, Azzaroni confirms my suspicion as he puts his seventh in the year, tying the game at one. And it's really good to see that we're here to fight. Unfortunately, about six minutes later, Dallas scores another goal, one-time blast, and puts it behind Bernier for their second of the night, making it two to one. Two minutes later, a crazy poke check save. I mean, that if he didn't poke check it, it would have gone in, but off the rebound, I think my dad's creative character almost had an opportunity to put it in the back of the net, but Ottinger with a great save in order to save that from happening. Skipping down to the last three and a half minutes, Arturo gets bullied to the ground for some reason. Uh, he gets hit, and then I look away, and then I look back, and he's on the ground for some reason, so he must have gotten pushed down or something. And then a couple minutes later, he did not like that and ends up hitting someone really really hard you'd love to see it going to the third period down by one once again 45 seconds into the third big hit by dallas and then a few minutes later another big hit by dallas hurting parkinen who ends up limping off and then zach cassian approaches the guy who hit him rupe hints who did not want to drop the gloves three minutes later eakin finally puts one in for us getting also his seventh of the season and tying it back up two to two my hopes have been revived. A couple minutes later, Novak with a huge hit in our defensive zone, looking really good for us. And then skipping down to the last three minutes or so, Dallas with a huge hit on Fitzgerald. He obviously loses the puck. They get it. They send it to the net. And then Joe Pavelski finds the rebound in order to put it behind Bernier, making it a 3-2 lead with 
about three minutes to go and then we get a little ambitious we pull our goalie and then dallas puts one in the empty net with about 30 seconds to go basically securing their win 10 seconds to go jb says he at least wants to get one and he puts one in the net as well making the final score four to three in favor of the dallas stars honestly i didn't feel too bad about this game i don't know it still was a loss and uh we you know could have obviously done better taking less penalties but I, I felt pretty good. I thought the game went pretty well. I thought we played pretty hard. I like the way Parkin played today. I thought he was, uh, he didn't have any of the highlights or anything like that, but he was hitting. I mean, he wasn't knocking by down, but he was hitting. He was uh, really being part of the play and just playing above the overall that he's given within the game. And I thought we played pretty, pretty well. Bernier definitely saved our cheeks with a ton of really good saves, but I thought the team played decently well for, you know, the overall that we are. Let's go ahead and move on to the last few games. All right, moving on to game six versus the Thunder Bay Warriors. I'm going to let the uh, first period play a little bit as I discuss what happened in between. So Bailey's out for a couple weeks with a strained hamstring. I'm putting Sven Barchi in uh, plates for him while he recovers. And then we also traded uh, Esperant and a couple of picks for Luke Glenn Denning from the Dallas Stars because he's got some really good face offs. So I put him up on the second, the second line along with some of the other specialty lines and stuff like that. So he's going to be part of the team as well. Let's see if we can get a W over the Thunder Bay Warriors. First five minutes, nothing's really going on until Zach Cassian gets a rebound goal, getting his eighth on the season, putting us up 1-0, looking really good. I put Cassian up on the first line, and it's already paying off. Nyquist went down because he's just not really doing anything, even though he's highest rated overall on the team. He hasn't really been able to do much, so Cassian's up there again, and it's already paying off. 50 seconds later, Hopey with a good save, keeping the game where it's at. And then about six minutes later, a big hit and a goal that they converted on for the Thunder Bay Warriors. I mean, there's not much you can do after you get knocked down. You're going to obviously lose the puck, and it was a good opportunity for them. I just noticed my guys don't pass. They just don't pass that much. They get stuck in these corners, and a lot of these turnovers end up costing us. Then about a minute later, a big hit for one of our guys. And then moving down to the last four minutes or so, Antonio with a big hit, then an injury which caused a fight between Jay Beagle and the old man Joe Thornton. For a while, I didn't know who that Thornton was. I thought it was someone else because they gave him number seven for some reason. But Jay Beagle took on Joe Thornton as Antonio injured one of their players, and Joe Thornton came out with the dub. Skipping down to the last 10 seconds, Zach Hansen with another big hit in our defensive zone, and we're going into the second period all tied up. But unfortunately, that is not a long-lasting thing as the Thunder Bay Warriors put a goal in less than three minutes into the second period. Three minutes later, Hopi with a couple of good saves on the penalty kill. We had a power play chance, but we could not get the opportunity. We could not put it in. Then a few minutes later, another big hit for the Thunder Bay Warriors just really pounding in on us, really trying to keep that lead. But fortunately for us, 30 seconds later, JB might create a character with his ninth on the season, all tied up, two to two, and it's looking pretty good for us. A pretty even match game. I mean, we I feel pretty good with the game. We put on some pressure. They also have their pressure as well. We've been doing pretty good, at least with the you know first half of the game so far. Three minutes later, another famous turnover by one of our guys as Bernier bails us out once again with another save, and then skipping down to the last five minutes or so, just this whole last half of the period a lot of crazy pressure from the thunder bay warriors keeping keeping us in our zone you know we just can't get it out lots of saves bernier bailing us out over and over again uh but fortunately for us bernie is able to stem off most of their attack we can go into the third period all tied up heading into the third period within the first few minutes nothing's really going on hope he makes a couple of big saves keeping the game tied and then just a very stagnant period uh, a lot of turnovers within the neutral zone, some weird like animations, so the players get stuck a little bit at some point. So not really a lot going on. A couple of decent hits or maybe some saves, but nothing too significant until about four minutes left to go. Cassian with a great goal, with a great setup from my guys. Behind the net, up to the point, down to Cassian in front, putting it behind the net, giving us the advantage. Getting his ninth on the season and second of the game. And it's looking pretty good for us with only four minutes to go. Two and a half minutes left to go. Glenn Denning with a huge hit against one of their players up against the boards, knocking them down. Just trying to cement this victory for us. I would love this dub against the Thunder Bay Warriors. They're definitely the threat for us within our division because they have all the NHL players. Then, unfortunately, skipping down to the last few seconds. A weird, bouncy, uncorralled goal. Thunder Bay picks it up, puts it in the back of the net. They pulled their goalie, and they kept the pressure on in order to force us to go to OT. First few minutes of OT, nothing's really going on. Two good chances that end up not going through. They were both like weird outcomes. They both just like lost the puck on like some breakaways and 
Uh, nothing really happened out of that. I have not been past an OT. We have not been forced to go to a shootout. And that remains true as the Thunder Bay Warriors finds a way to clutch out a win against us. Forcing us to go to OT and then taking the victory over us as they win 4-3. to three, And unfortunately we fall to them once again. But that's going to be pretty much it for this game. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I, got, I, I believe it's another NHL team. Uh, another hard battle coming up. Hopefully we can get something going and uh, salvage a little bit of victories towards the end of this episode. Alright guys, back for game 7 against the Minneapolis Piggies. Not really worried at all because these guys are very, like on paper they look very bad and we've already beaten them before. I'm expecting an easy W for us. In the first few minutes of the game, Minneapolis gets an unlucky bounce that gets them a goal, but I'm not really worried at this point, like I already said. We're doing pretty good. I think we can easily beat this team. But we go down one nothing within the first few minutes of the game let's see if we can bounce back pretty quickly 30 seconds later Zaga doing with a good save keeping the game where it's at and then a couple minutes later after a shot jb gets rocked after he takes a shot on net and Zaga doing comes up with another good save a couple minutes later great pressure by us as nyquist finally finds the back of the net getting his fourth on the season tying it back up one to one and again i'm just waiting for us to get the lead we're going to easily get this dub uh the piggies aren't really that much of a threat in my eyes a couple minutes later big hit for us and then Skipping down to the last three minutes, a breakaway goal by the Minneapolis Piggies making it 1-2. to two. Again, watching this again, I'm not really sweating that much just yet. It's I'm, I'm chilling. You know, the Piggies don't really put that much of a threat on us. We can easily come back. And I was right because two minutes into the second period, Thomas Tatar gets his 15th on the season, making it 2-2. Two -two. We're all tied up. And my fate doesn't go unwarranted as two minutes later, Gustav Nyquist returns for his second goal of the game, fifth on the season, and giving us the lead 3-2. to two. However, the Minneapolis Piggies aren't going down without a fight. 30 seconds later, they get a another goal and put it in the back of the net, tying it 3-3. to three. You gotta be kidding me when I saw that. I'm like, why are we still letting them score? But it's okay. We're all tied up. Let's go ahead and get the lead so we can get this dub. Three minutes later, Bernie with another save. I'm getting a little nervous. I'm um, actually a little worried. These guys are scoring a lot easier than I thought they would. Uh, we're still playing hard, but just a little nervous. Skimming down to the last five minutes. Big hit for us in the offensive zone. And then a couple minutes later, Minneapolis once again finds the back of the net. And it's just astounding that no one's doing anything. The guy just gets around everybody. He's just right there and puts it in the back of the net behind Bernier. Bernier's having a weird night as well. And Minneapolis takes the lead 4-3. 20 seconds later, a good hit from my dad's creative character. Just trying to get some momentum going. I don't know really. I, really, I don't really know what's going on with this team right now. And why this is so difficult for us. But uh, unfortunately, two minutes left to go. Minneapolis scores another goal because we just have a lazy ass effort in our zone and they end up making it 5-3 going into the third i'm not really sure what's going on here i'm getting a little upset because i'm like why is this happening so easily why is no one doing nothing and we're going into the third down by two 30 seconds in the piggies pour it on with another fucking goal and it's now six to three and i'm just looking so confused on why this is happening don't know why the fuck we can't stop these guys from scoring bernie's having a bad night defense is nowhere to be found about 18 minutes left in the game, Tatar with another goal, putting us back up to 4-6. to six. 16th on the season, second of the night. We're still down by two. I don't, you know, we need to win this game. I don't know what's going on. Unfortunately, 30 seconds later, Minneapolis is going to shut that down. We don't get a second to breathe as they score another goal, making it 7-4. to four. I don't, I, I don't know what the fuck is happening. And then three minutes later, Nyquist gets his hat trick goal. Six on the season, five to seven. I'm still worried. I don't give a fuck about this hat trick. Why are we losing to the fucking piggies this bad? And then another goal five minutes later by the Minneapolis piggies. Just sloppiness as I was watching the play develop. It was just expected. I just, it just looked like it was going to happen, and I was fucking right. They score another goal, making it eight to five. And then a couple minutes later, they just. Bernier's still in net? They score another fucking goal, making it 9-5. to five. And, you know, that's pretty much the end of it. You know, I, I, I don't even know. I don't have words to explain what I just witnessed. We lost to these guys like we were playing the Tampa Bay Lightning. Like, what the, who the... Who the fuck are these guys? They're the fucking piggies. Their offense is a 55. 9-5. We're going to the next game. Um, 
I might make some changes, but yeah, that's, um, wow. Okay. Moving on. All right, back at it for game eight. We're going against the Chicago Blackhawks. We've got the special intro, so maybe we're taking it a little bit seriously with this game. Let's see if we can break our three-game losing streak. All right, first minute and a half, nothing really going on until Mrazek makes a big save on us, keeping the game tied at zero. And then about five minutes later, unfortunately, Jared Beck's first game and first shift, he gets hit, he gets hurt, and it results in a fight of Novak versus N Twizzle. And Twizzle? And, uh, and Twizzle gets the best of him, beating down Novak, and Jarabek is out for the remainder of the game. It's just unfortunate. He, his very first game, his very first shift, he gets hit and hurt. Put him in, replacing Parkinson to see if that would help the team. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to see him. A minute later, Chicago with the big hit, followed by us one minute later with a big hit of our own. Very physical game. We're getting into each other's you know faces, and uh, it's been pretty interesting to watch so far. Three minutes later, another big hit on Patrick Kane as his helmet goes flying as well. We are not going down without a fight. And another three minutes after that, another big hit for us. And before the end of the first period, my curated character, Zaroni, gets a goal. Leaks in behind Mrazi, eighth of the season, making it one to nothing. Feeling pretty good going into the second period until about 20 seconds in. Chicago's had enough of that, and they end up tying the game at one. A couple minutes later, Chicago's had enough of the tie game, and they somehow... Get a blast behind Bernier, making it 2-1. And then they double down on that a minute later by scoring another pretty much really easy shoveled backhand goal. And uh, they end up making the lead 3-1. And we're going into the third period down by two. I'm not feeling too great, but I'm not feeling that bad versus the last game. I think we still have an opportunity to come back. Feeling pretty good until about a minute and a half in. Chicago squashes that feeling as they score another goal, making it 4-1. 30 seconds later, Cassian comes back with a goal of his own, getting his 10th on the season, making it 2-4. So my hope is still a little bit alive. Good amount of time left in the third period. Let's see if we can capitalize on it. About a minute and a half later, Chicago says, no, you ain't doing shit, as they score another goal, making it 5-2. And then skipping down to the last couple minutes, Chicago doubled down with another goal, making it 6-2. And they ended up taking a victory over us, 6-3, as we end up getting another goal within the last 30 seconds. But... Uh, unfortunately, we fall to the Blackhawks 6-3. It wasn't as close as I thought it was going to be. It, it started out pretty good, but then it kind of just spiraled into a very, very bad finish. But we've still got one more game to play against, I think it's the Capitals we're playing against next. So another hard game coming up. Hopefully we can get something. Even if it's just a point, I'll be happy. Uh, but that's going to extend our losing streak to four. Let's see what we can do in the last game. All right, final game of the episode. We're going against the Washington Capitals. I just found out Jarabek is going to be out for a couple weeks with a mild concussion. You hate to see it, but we're going into this game hoping for a win. Hoping to break the losing streak. Let's see what we can do. Two minutes into the game, Washington says they aren't going to give us a chance as they score right out the gate, making it one nothing in favor of them. Five minutes later, a big hit from us. Just fighting back a little bit, but then Washington, about six minutes later, retaliates as they hit one of our guys, Cody Eakin, who ends up getting hurt. And uh, he actually ends up going to the dressing room, and he does not return for the remainder of the game. So I have another injury to deal with uh, after this game. And then a minute later, Novak with a big hit of his own, just retaliating as well. And then Washington comes back with a big hit of their own four minutes later on Zeroni. So the first period, just a lot of gruesome hits and... A couple good saves and everything like that, but slow start. Washington came out blasting, and then it just got very, very physical. Second period starts off the exact same way. Washington with a big hit on their side, and then four minutes later, Novak with a big hit for him as well. 30 seconds later, Kempfer with a big save to keep the game in favor of them. And then skipping down to the last two and a half minutes, Paul with a weird, leaky goal. But I'll take it. He gets his seventh on the season, ties it at one, and that's pretty much going to wrap it up for the first two periods. Tied at one going into the third. It's been an interesting game so far, and uh, we're going into the third tied at one. 30 seconds into the third, Kemper with another save to keep the game tied at one. And then about seven minutes later, another big hit from Cyclone Novak. Four minutes later, my dad's creative character finally finds the back of the net. The stalemate is broken. Sixth on the season. 2-1 in favor of us. And we're feeling pretty good. Two and a half minutes later, they test our goaltender, Bernier, with a good one-time save as he keeps it out of the net. And then dwindling down to the last minute, the last 30 seconds, they pull the goalie. And we end up holding them off with some good defense. We end up breaking the losing streak and coming out on top against the Washington Capitals with a 2-1 to one win. And just with this, it proves that, again, we can play against these guys. It's just a matter of how hard we're willing to play 
against the teams that we go against. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the video, and then that'll be it. Okay, so we're back in. Cody Eakin has been injured with a sore foot. He's going to be out for a couple weeks. So I'm going to go ahead and put in, <laughs> look at that, Kevin Fitzgerald losing morale because of ice time when you're 60, bro. Come on. You're 60, man. All right, we're going to put Beagle up here. We'll put Fitzgerald in. Let me just do this real quick, and then I'll come back. All right, so we got Eakin out. Fitzgerald's in for him in his spot, and then I changed a couple things around. But we are 13, 10, and 4 after the past 27 games. We're not doing too bad. We look at the standings here. We are second in our division, but I believe we are out of the play. Did they say they have 42? Hold on, let me look at the Warriors here real quick. 42 point. Wow, they're second. Jesus, and then we're down to 30 points. Okay, let's see where we're at in the league. Are they actually second? No, they're not actually second. Okay, they're fourth in the league. Wow. Okay, so the chance of them making the playoffs is pretty high. I wonder how they do against the NHL teams. Uh, let's see. We are, I think the last game they said we were like 30th, so we might have gone up a little bit. Let's see where we're at. 31st. Wow. Wow. All right, good. We're down to the 31st position. Um, we obviously have the potential to beat NHL teams. We've done it several times this you know, this year so far. So I think we definitely can make it. We just got to keep playing well and get to that top, at least the top 18, to give us a chance. Look at the points here. We got the tar at the top. We've got Kansan right behind him. And everybody's looking pretty good. Everyone's looking pretty good here. We're going to see if we can continue with our luck and really get what we need but um yeah that's pretty much it for the episode guys we're gonna come back do another nine games and that'll put us at 36 we'll almost be halfway done vancouver's up next another nhl team another tough match uh, let's see who else we're going against uh, minnesota's gonna be tough the python should be a good win anaheim we got nashville coming up milwaukee is the woman uh, the team we lost to so uh that'll be an interesting match again then brooklyn milwaukee and i believe brooklyn once again one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah brooklyn will be the last match so uh it's like half and half we got a bunch of good matches and a bunch of really tough matches coming up but like i said we beat capitals we beat the flyers we've beaten uh you know the golden knights we have the ability to beat these teams we just need to continue playing the way we do but uh, that's all i have for the video guys hope you guys enjoyed it if you did definitely appreciate it. like comment or subscribe we'll come back for the next nine games and see where we're stacked after that